I realized after that day, like, I don't want to waste this time. If I'm going to waste this time, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Like, I had so much time on hand, I did nothing with it. I'm going to regret it. And so I started, like, I'll just start doing startups. I saw a tweet that said, like, prototyping is here, right? Now I look at the prototyping, it has if else statements have variables. And I saw that, and I was like, oh shit, I can build a computer and figure them up. And I'm like, probably nobody else knows this right now. The best projects I've ever built have not really become something I had a bunch of passion for that I wanted to work on. It comes from like going through things and realizing like, why has no one done this? And like, somebody needs to do this. And okay, nobody else is doing it, so I have to. Anyone can make something cool in two months, right? Like if you have two months to work on something, like you can do something that just because of the amount of time you spend on a certain area that nobody's done before, right? Um, but if you have two weeks, you have to think about what's simple, achievable, and like actually cool too. And that's a hard problem and that gets you thinking. So, okay, if I want to replicate kind of your success from a personal brand perspective, after I buy the 3,000 followers, <laughs> what would you Don't say? It's actually really bad for your engagement. So if you have 3,000 fake okay. followers, I'll just give it to a bunch of Indians who are not on, even on the app. <laughs> hey man, why did you just say Indians like okay. that? <laughs> that's, that's bad. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Hey Podcast. Well, welcome to the podcast. Happy to be here. <laughs> so as of a week ago, you started working at OpenAI as a resident. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. And what's that been like? Great. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was a big goal of mine. Like it seemed like a really cool place to work. And so I, I put a lot of energy in, into getting there. And um, yeah, I mean, like already I've learned so much. I mean, like tons of, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to break into the AI space in general. And like, I think like being able to be surrounded by so many cool people is amazing. So, if, yeah. if I'm allowed to ask, what was the process like to actually get into open AI? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like basically DMing like all of my friends with any connections into the space and be like, hey, like, can you help me? Um, I think I don't have a traditional background. I mean, like, you know, generally I just like dropped out of college and and like built startups and been doing random projects since. So it's not like there's a very traditional resume I can kind of send in. And so I was like, whatever works and wherever I can fit in and I can learn whatever space I get into. And so I was like, I don't actually really care what position I'm in. Just want to get into the company and learn and, and figure it out. From yeah. There. So. Yeah. Interesting. And then what would you say your main thing was right before um, full-time at, at OpenAI? Building stuff, unemployed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, unemployed. Yeah. How, how do you like explain what you do to people before you were at OpenAI? Uh, I think you just build stuff. I think that's like what I do. I mean, I, that's a, I still, what I do now, you know, that's what I like to, yeah. I mean, I think generally I told people I work in startups. I mean, um, yeah, that's much the story. Okay. And so to back up, I think when you were in high school, you had built uh, your first startup. Yeah. I mean, the story related to like how I got started in startups and tech in general is basically that like, I mean, like I kind of always did, you know, my dad worked in tech and so I was interested in it, but I honestly never coded until I was like 17 or 18. Wow. Actually. Um, I, I did a bunch of like electronic stuff for some reason, like hardware and I liked like buying like dumb capacitors and like charging them and whatever. Mm. And like, I was not that successful at building anything at all. Actually, I, my family made fun of me because I never finished my projects and I never really, <laughs> I would just like screw around with it and never finished. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then like basically COVID hit and like kind of late junior year of high school and like all of senior. And so like during that time, I think I was like, I had like basically three times as much, you know, time as I normally had. And um, I was, I just spent, before that, I was like spending all my time in school. I mean, I, I just like studied all the time and worked really hard. I, I went to school in West LA and like I think the school- Where'd you go to school? A uh, school called Geffen Academy. Um, oh, it's wow. a like, school connected to UCLA. Yeah, um, yeah. I was actually the first graduating class, which is fun. So, really? Yeah. What's Geffen? Well, David Geffen is a- legend in the David Geffen know. uh started school at UCLA for like high school so um, oh wow donated some money for it yeah what was that like yeah strange I mean I went to a public school for the first year for freshman year and then I was like this was not for me I, I remember I got a B in Spanish and I used to live in Argentina for five years why did you get a B and that, this is the point which is like I think I was there and I realized like being smart and like thinking about things and, and uh, I guess like actually being good at the skill you're supposed to be tested yeah. on wasn't the thing that you were graded on. And I think for me, it was like, don't fall asleep in class and like say, pay attention and do and, and oh, kind of like, what a villain origin story. This <laughs> dude got a B and fell asleep in class. <laughs> and then I think at that point I realized that like a lot of the classes there, even like the AP classes were yeah. just really kind of memorizing a book. And I'm mm -hmm. like, actually that's, I'm bad at that. Like if I go through that, I'm just going to fail. And yeah. like, I know I'm capable of shit. And I like, that's a bad, it's a bad strategy. And so for me, I was like, you I need figure to figure that out yourself. I think I was just miserable. Like realistically, yeah. I just fucking hated school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I think all kids do. And like, you know, I just wanted to figure out a way out of there. Mm. And then I just was like, hey, like one of my friends was like, I go to this new school called Geffen Academy. You want to come join there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll take a look. And I applied. I don't think I asked my parents. I just like applied to the school. Really? And I like got in and just went there and it was a great experience. Yeah. You said you lived in Argentina for five years? Oh yeah, yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah. What was that like? 
Were you born there or were you born here? I was born in Seattle, actually. Okay. Um, my family just moved to Argentina when I was five. Nice. Um, very strange story of why. I mean, it's like very complex. But uh, um, I mean, the I guess there's a lot of reasons. Part of it was like one of our friends like predicted the 2008 start stock market crash and like what? had convinced us to sell our houses. Like, Are you serious? About a year before. Um, Did you guys actually do it? Yeah, you know, we were we sold our houses. They were in Argentina. And then we like- well, I didn't know he sold that At that point, we were just kind of renting on uh, Seattle altogether. And we're like, hey, it would be cool if we moved to Argentina. The reason why is like all of our, um, the dads in this kind of yeah. friend group, basically, um, uh, all worked remotely, which is kind of strange for like, what, wow. 2008? 2008? Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're like, well, Argentina, Buenos Aires is only like one hour off of Eastern, I uh -huh. think. Um, and, and so we were like, oh. works great, move down there, and then we can learn a new language and experience a new culture and everything. And we thought we were gonna stay for two years, we stayed for five. Wait, and, so you moved with a bunch of friends too? Yeah, yeah, we moved with two other families. What was that like? Great. I mean, like super, I mean, we moved there, we moved there like knowing no Spanish. Like okay. if that gives you some context on like who my, who my parents and their friends are and like our family is kind of like, kind of insane at some yeah. level, but like in a good way, you know? Okay, so <laughs> while you were there, I guess towards like the later years, what was your like life like? You mean like being uh, in Argentina? Yeah, being yeah. in Argentina I mean, with your friends that you like lived in the US with. Yeah, it was complicated. I mean, like we, I was homeschooled for like most of my life until no sixth grade. Um, and so you, that was an experience. And I think, you know, I'm actually, out of all the things that I'm most grateful for, that's like probably the biggest um, in terms of like, I think most kids, like, you know, if you go meet some like eight year olds, like they just run around and like, like to do shit all the time. And yeah. like the, I think just putting yourself in school, like making you sit down all the time and like learn from a board and like, don't move and don't yell at kids and like, don't poke your friend is like not something that people are super good at. Um, not to say that you don't need school. Actually, I think school is very important. I think the ability though, to like, curate kids interest in things from mm. like a young age is like most of which I attribute my interest in building things. Um, I think my mom, you know, basically schooled me and my two brothers. Um, and then just like, kind of taught us and like, we, you know, by the time we started sixth grade, I was like a year or a year and a half ahead of other people. And wow. it makes sense. I think this is basically true for basically anyone, which is like, if you had learning that matched your speed and look, you yeah. know, at the time, like the things that you go fast at, you go fast at, things you go slow at, you go slow at. Mm. And at the end of the day, you just, you know, spend more time in things you care about and spend less time in things you don't. Well, you um, have a similar. Yeah, yeah, so okay. I was actually homeschooled. No um, way! From, I think, sixth grade onward. Okay, All cool. the way through high school. And so that was really interesting because I I think during high school, I started to get really interested in, like, marketing yeah. and, like, making videos and stuff. And that gave me the free time to, like, go kind of figure out my school stuff for, like, one hour a day, two hours a day, sometimes, like, three or four. Yep. Uh, but then I'd have the rest of the day to be able to work uh, on, like, I started an agency. And so that That's was, so like, awesome. a, yeah, like, the typical, like, internet kid thing was, like, I'm going to go do a marketing agency. And that doesn't sound typical, but yeah, it sounds good. I, I feel mean, like now like, every like person on the internet, um, at least on like Instagram, it feels like everyone's just doing some type of like a marketing media agency. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and so I had actually kind of tried to do that. And because I was homeschooled, I was able to like travel during the school year and I was able yeah. to do a lot of those things. Wait, so how old were you when you did that? Um, so I probably left when I was 11 and then I started the marketing agency. I started editing videos for YouTubers when I was 12 because I wanted money. Yes. And then I started the agency when I was like 13, 14, when I realized that I knew how to take photos from Boy Scouts. And then I Let's knew go. how to um, <laughs> edit videos from the YouTubers. Yes. And so I was like, oh, I should just make like a filmmaking agency. Dude, this is, I think I want to talk about this specifically because like the one pattern I've, I've realized in like a lot of the young builders I've met and, and I think in myself and other people is that like basically everyone I've met has got their start in like some, I like to call it like maybe like relative competition. The idea being like, we all started like some new field. Like I, I built like mm. Discord servers and Minecraft servers. Like actually all the guys that built Minecraft servers who were like the, the the age, like probably they were like five years older than me when we when we starting out. Uber. They were really building Shout like the- Uber. Yeah, Did Uber, he, um, he, he used to run like entire like servers. That was his whole company was called really? Curse. I mean, what is he doing now? I mean like- He's startups. the head of investments at- He's Hunter's my Inc. boss. <laughs> This is my point. All the guys who were building Minecraft servers when we were kids, they're all like running series A, series C Spons. companies right yeah. now. Yeah. And, and the reason why, and then why? for me, it's like Discord servers. I think for you, you did a marketing agency, which is sounds cooler than Discord servers. Tell, tell like, me why I listen to him. <laughs> Say again? Tell me why I listen to him. Why? No, because you're about to tell me why you guys are running things. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I think go. the point <laughs> is that like, it's really hard to learn how to build stuff and be yeah. creative and think of ideas. And, and the problem is like, if you do this right now in like a saturated space, like if you're trying to build like, you know, I mean, you know, I think there's a lot of spaces that are saturated, mm -hmm. right? And like yeah. most cases, like you're trying to do SaaS right now and you're, if you're like 12 and trying to do SaaS or 14 and trying to do SaaS, I mean like not even do SaaS, like just build a thing know, for your yeah. friends. Yeah. Like you're not going to be able to succeed. Mm -hmm. Versus like Discord servers, like nobody above the age of like 17 or, or 20 was like really building Discord servers with their free time. To be clear, nobody has the time to do that. I was like sitting in school, like bored. I have all the time in the world. I'm like be able to spend a bunch of time doing things that nobody cares about. How much about. time do you actually have to put in? 
to that. On I mean, like even like how much time you spend on marketing agency or like Minecraft servers, like yeah. kids have so much time during the day sure. and they spend all of it. And like, they're able to spend 40 hours when you can spend five. Mm, and like, that's a good point. In this yeah. case, I was able to learn how to be creative, how to think, how to like, and actually one thing is like all my friends did like sneaker bots. I, I know a bunch of friends yeah. did sneaker oh, bots. Yeah. I never did that that's stuff. Right. I was not into that, but like, all of them are doing well now. And the idea was like, they were only really competing with their friends. Like the, nobody has uh, running sneaker bots, but yeah. other mm. 15 year olds. But right? also you get your 10,000 hours a lot faster because you don't have like normal responsibilities. You don't have a full-time job. And that's why things like homeschool, I think help uh, a lot more. So the 10,000 hours thing is an interesting comparison. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's, that, that's very valid. I, I think, I think like experience is valid. I think in general, like it, a hundred, 200 hours is enough of like being able so? to create something you care about when yeah. you're like, you have something that's taking off and you're able to be like, oh, I can design this. I can push this in any direction I want. I can think about ideas, what works, what doesn't. Let mm. me try different things. Yeah. Um, because like most people I know just haven't had that opportunity. And for me, this was like a Discord bot I built when I was like, you know, this like end of high school for me. I started the Discord bot and that turned it into a whole startup that, you know, we ended up selling. But the point is like, that was just some dumb thing I built that because nobody else was really competing because it's only really kids doing this, I, I was able to kind of make, get something off the ground and then kind of stretch my creative muscles and build things and choose design features and implement them and then see if they didn't work and do something else and just yeah. have that experience. And once you have that, I think that's what you need to kind of take off. How do you there. develop the business experience? So you guys are so young doing this. I have you no business experience. <laughs> but I'm saying you sold, so you guys sold the company. You were obviously getting big clients. Yeah. Like how do you guys, cause you guys were, Builders, pretty much. I, I assume you both didn't have business mentors yep. at that age. Like, how do you navigate when everyone talks about, oh, you need to handle yourself a certain way in these meetings? Or I assume you both talk to corporate entities when you're doing business. In I mean, kind of. Yeah. I, I don't think it's that hard. I yeah. think like you underrate how hard school is. Like, I think for me, I always thought the world would be more complex. Like, even like going to larger and larger or more important rooms over time are always like, they're all actually not that complicated. Like it's mm. pretty simple in many of these cases. And I think, yeah. um, yeah, I think the thing for me is like you ask kids, like they're doing like fractions or whatever the math they're having to learn. They're learning way more than you have to learn and like studying way more than you have to study every mm. day. Sure. And so you put them into like my, building Minecraft servers and competing with people. I'm like, wait, I love this. I'm going to do this. I get paid for this. Or at least you get to like have some enjoyment. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I think most kids would do well in these kind of scenarios. Mm. Right. Because they have the motivation. They have the experience. What, what do you think? Yeah. I think it's similar. Um, a lot of school is doing things you don't want to do. Mm. And then when you compare that to now giving like a kid the free reign to work on something he's actually interested in mm. and go into those feedback loops of like, oh, now I have in the Discord server example, I'd run yep. a few. Now I have people like talking in the server that I can always go to. Yep. Um, for the marketing agency, it's like, oh, like now I have money in my bank account that I sure. can do whatever I want with. Okay. And then you get addicted to just like seeing like the so just go, like, numbers growing. go up. So you guys are yeah. just like, yeah, I want to And there's no one growing. telling you what to do. Yeah. Right. Because then that was super interesting to me because I was like, that, that was the first time where I was able to like do your own thing. And mm -hmm. that was like addictive mm -hmm. um, because it's like, you see, you put the, you put certain inputs, output numbers go up, mm -hmm. chain of inputs, and it just becomes addicting to just go into the loops. It's about the, it's about the feedback loop. Like yeah. you can't get the feedback loop of building things if you yeah. don't actually build something that works and has users and has like at least some feedback, right? Like whether that's YouTube views or, you know, dollars or like number of people who are using your Discord bot, right? Mm. And, like that's the thing that's the commodity that is so rare, which is most people don't have the opportunity to get into this feedback loop. Right? Do you see the same thing as like the whole building in public versus keeping things private? Is that the same philosophy? Like sh should you always build in public or is there? I think like the message of like launch as soon as possible, like you yeah. haven't launched soon enough is usually related to this of like, just get feedback from the world. Like that's how mm -hmm. you grow. Um, yeah. The build in public thing, I, I generally think is more about branding and like personal branding and like marketing, but mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's, it gives you distribution. It solves the distribution problem because usually what people struggle with is finding their first users. And then when you build in public, people watch you along the way and people like helping out like the little guy too. Yeah. So they'll like, oh, you, this is super cool. You should, they'll send it to their friend. You should check this out, et cetera, yep. et cetera. Mm. Totally. Yeah. Cedro had said, do you know Cedro? Of course I know okay. Who doesn't know Cedro? <laughs> <laughs> but we interviewed Cedro for a vlog when he was at the office. Yeah. But he, uh, we were asking like, what's, you know, the one, the one thing you failed at yeah. as, as a founder of startup that kind of you learn from and you build it off. And, yeah. and his thing was like, don't, don't build too fast sometimes. Like that's a bad thing in itself. Like you might ship too fast yeah. and, and there are, you know, kind of drawbacks sometimes to building and shipping in public. Like, and I think he kind of learned hmm. that. Okay. I think the problem is sometimes you gotta be careful who you get advice from because I think Sigil is like someone who's just, too far ahead. <laughs> like, okay. like he's giving yeah. advice. I think a lot of people should take, but mm. like once they're there, like I think he's totally right. But like the first thing is get off the ground and then it's like worry about how fast you're building or these other things. Right. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, a, I think it's like a high class problem for someone who builds a lot of cool stuff. So mm. yeah. 
Um, for, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so going back to your story, in high school, you were kind of like, you built this Discord server, <laughs> yeah. kind of sold it. Yeah. And then what made you keep going to like the next thing? Because I think the next thing you started was called Alter, which is, I think, turned into Deep Research. Yeah. And so basically, yeah, all it was is um, around COVID, COVID hit. I realized that like I was what studying was all the time and uh, I was like, I have all this time now. Like I used to like our drive to and from school was like an hour and 15 minutes or something. Oh, and wow. so like I got so much time back immediately and also school got so easy around COVID. And I was like, great. Like I realized after that day, like I don't want to waste this time. If I'm going to waste this time, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Like mm. I had so much time on hand. I did nothing with it. I'm going to regret it. And so I started, like, I'll just start doing startups. Like actually I started this like dumb messaging app startup. The idea of being like, oh, during COVID, like, um, you know, people need better ways to connect, especially as cool as offline, like building things for, um, I, I guess like schools, like pro enterprise. It was first it was like consumer social. And then it was like enterprise for schools. Um, mm. Totally failed, did not work, raised some money from friends and, and and family and like just failed. Yeah. But then I decided like, let's go do something else. And then I kind of got into the discord startup mm. thing. Yeah. That's so funny. I did a very similar thing. I think COVID started. Yeah. Um, I decided to take a gap year after high school because I graduated a year early. Awesome. And initially the thought process was go to community college, just like straight, uh, go to college straight. Yep. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm going to take a gap year. And if I don't get into a good school, I'm just not going to go. <laughs> and I started building, I, I, I did a lot that year. I think I had like, I was concurrently running like a bunch of different projects. Yep. But one of the main things was a social app to meet people and like, like a, the, the typical first time founder, uh, an app to like hang out with your friends yeah. uh, also didn't work. But yep. doing that taught me about like user distribution, told me what YC was. It was like, you know, you start watching like the videos. Yep. You start realizing who like the interesting kind of like thought leaders are in the space who start giving you advice. That was super interesting. Yep. Um, how did that turn into like the next thing? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like, once you start looking, I think consumer socials where everyone starts, because it's what everybody uses every day and what everybody cares mm -hmm. about. Like, I like social apps. I want to run a social app. I want more social apps, right? Yeah. Like, that's true. And I actually think it's a good thing. Like, I think generally, like, the fact that, um, like, when people just start out, they just work on the thing they actually care about. The problem is, like, there's no feedback loop. Like, you're in a launch of social media and it has no users and there's no information. And and also, like, the one biggest mistake people do is like, they build for six months and launch the product at the end. And you're like, you should have launched on day three, right? Mm. Um, and, like, it's so easy to spend time. And I did that mistake, too. Like, just to be clear, I've done that. It's been um, a year. Yeah. I spent, like, probably six or seven months basically on this and it just didn't work out and I didn't test enough. But basically, during that, I was also just exploring and reading and, and you know, just doing shit on the side for fun. Um, and then at some point I remember like I had a CS course, um, CS class. Yeah. In high school. And, uh, I had like one of the greatest teachers ever. I mean, this guy's amazing. Um, but he basically recognized that like there was a couple of people in the class who like knew they were coding and, like, or at least had the capacity to do really good yeah. coding. And so he was like, I don't really care what you do. Go do your own thing. That's fine. Whatever. And at that point I was like, Oh, AI is kind of cool. Like I like AI. AI. I've heard a bunch about it. And I was like, I want to do like NLP or something. Mm. Um, and I did discord a lot. And I, at some point, like I found like this tool that let you download an entire discord server, his chat history, which is like absurd. Like discord lets you download like way too much data. <laughs> Um, but I could download it. It took me three minutes. Actually, it was the Gen Z Mafia Discord server. I don't of course, know if you remember this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I downloaded that, and okay. I was like, "Oh, this is cool! Like, I have all of this. Like, what the hell?" Yeah. And then I realized there was like a tag. It was a, mess a bunch of messages, and there was a tag was saying like replies, and it would have a name, the mention of the person who you just replied to. So if you send a message, you mention someone. There's like a JSON format for that. Mm. It's like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, what happens if I graph this? What if I graph like who's talking to who, and you can have like a visual of like who mentioned who the most. And then that immediately turned into like, I posted that on Twitter. People really liked it. And like, I want to use your product. I'm like, it's not a product. It's a Python script. Like mm. it's not actually real, a real thing, but yeah. like basically started me building tools for discord. Yeah. Which turned into, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. And you then college? No, this was end of high school. Okay. This is like actually I was, I'm shutting down the other startup. So you're shutting it down. You're doing this, but you're just still... kind of screwing around. I yeah. mean, like for me, it was just like stumbled into something by just like messing around. I was like, Hey, a bunch of people really want this thing. And so I'll start building it. Um, mm. and I just got with some friends online and we just started building the product and, and launched something in about, I think like a month or so or a couple of yeah. weeks. And then like people really liked it and it started growing. And then we just decided like, this is the thing we're going to do full time. And we just kept working. And then basically by the end of the summer, we got a call from a guy who was like, Hey, I want to like buy your company. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> you know, wow. um, well, and that was like it? a week before I went off to school too. Which really? Crazy. I, was like, huh. I mean, it's just like, I, I thought I was going to quit. Like, honestly, I was like, well, really? I'm going to go to sc school. Yeah. You should commit to school. Like, if you're going to go to school, commit to school. So okay. it's like, I wasn't ready to do a startup, but like it came over. I'm like, great. That's what I'm going to do now. Mm. So, yeah. and then what was school like? You did a year. Yeah, school's great. I mean, like, I wish I could stay longer. Um, I mean, for me, it was like basically going to school and then doing a startup other half of the time. I mean, that's kind of tough to do. Um, and towards the end, I just felt like 
I'm half-assing two things, right? Like I'm half-assing a startup and I'm half-assing school. And yeah. like, I want to full ass one thing, not half ass two things, right? Mm. Um, and so I decided not to go back at the end of the year and then um, basically ended up here. I mean, also I, I was basically, because we sold the company, I, I um, ended up staying, I had to stay a year at okay. the parent company. Makes sense. And so I was like, why not? I don't want to do school and work at the same time next year too. I'm just going to like take some time off, finish that and then uh, see what's yeah. going to happen. It's, it's wild how similar you, you guys' story is. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the same same boat. I went through all the freshman year and then I started taking a gap yep. uh, in the middle of my sophomore year mm -hmm. because it had got to a point with, with F Inc. and school where I was like kind of doing a, I was getting to a point where I could do a lot more with F Inc. I was still like doing okay in school, yep. but I feel like I was leaving a lot on the table with F Inc. And I was like, okay, I don't want to keep doing this. Yep. Um, so I left in the middle of the semester. Um to go I, couldn't, full time. I couldn't pull my weight and he was like, I got to step in and carry you too. So it's like, you know, I got school and I got to do this, this guy's job. And it's yep. like, you know, you know how it is. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. He pulls everything. He basically does everything here. I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then my question, this was super easy for me to make the transition from, okay, now I live in SF. He's my, we live in the same apartment. Um, awesome. But now we live in SF. I have this like, Good friend group. Yeah. People at the office are super cool. I've never had to worry about any of that. Yeah. What was it like for you? And I also grew up here like an hour south. Oh, nice. So I have all my like friends I grew up with. Yep. What was it like for you to go from you're at Michigan now? I know some of your friends, but now you're like NSF. Like, yep. Completely different friend group. I'm guessing you're pretty far from your parents. What was yep. that like? I mean, I think it's hard. People ask me like where I'm from and I usually just like, kind of don't say anything. I'm like, I'm not really any from anywhere. Like oh, I moved what? around my entire life. I was born in hey, Seattle, man. moved to Argentina. You're from somewhere, man. <laughs> I mean, it's like, like generally, you like- You're not an alien, man. It's like, where are you from? He's like, no. <laughs> I mean, kind of, I, I think like, it's about identity too, which is like, where yeah. are you from? And you're like, yeah. I don't really have an identity of any specific place or community or culture because I just moved around a lot. And actually I appreciate that. I'm like, you What's know. the first thing that pops in your head when I'm like, where are you from? Probably LA. I mean, I spent like yeah. seven years in LA. I okay. did high school and like half of middle school there. So Why like, Michigan? Um, Michigan is a school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, that's the only school I got done to that was good, basically. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? That's the only place I got into. Yeah. So, what? Yeah. Where did you apply? A lot of places. Really? <laughs> Michigan's a good school. I think yeah. that's a pretty good representation yeah. of, like, school applications. I had, a very, not... I had a very good, res uh, like, application. What's too. wrong with <laughs> school applications? But we applied in the same year. Yeah. Oh, that, that cycle was messed up, though. Yeah, it was. That was, like, right after up. COVID. So yeah. our application cycle is one of, we got one really of the worst fucked. ones. Also, because a bunch of people deferred a year and so the spots were less for the next year uh, and then also like you know things happen and you know, but it's um, it, the variance is that high where you can like get year. into michigan and not get into schools on a similar tier like no, not at all yeah like ucla did you get into yeah. really huh yeah i mean it's a pretty good representation that like you shouldn't define let your worth be defined by your like where you go to college applications especially I think considering thing was tough. what you've done after yeah i think it was tough though was I, I it's like my, I was driven by my parents and just like generally community to like work really fucking hard in school. And mm -hmm. like I did, and then like to go through that and then like not get any anywhere and like see people that I, I don't know, not for good, not healthy reasons. I like worked yeah, really yeah. hard and I felt like I was worked harder than other people, did, which I think was true. And I had better grades than other people, but at the end of the day, they went to better schools than I did. And mm -hmm. I was like really tough. I think it was a good lesson, but like generally like, I think it's, I don't know. I have a lot of complicated thoughts about our college admission system. What, what is the lesson you took away from it? Yeah, I don't think I was doing it for the right reason, right? Mm. Like I wasn't, I mean, I was studying really hard and doing very well, but like for complicated ways, right? I think I was doing it just because I, I wanted to, I think I struggled in other parts of life, moving around all the time, like social, kind of like not, not having a grounding or a social community there. Yeah. And so like for me, I was like, oh, this is the thing that lets me feel good about myself and I'm going to be like better than other people or I'll have like kind of do well mm. because I get the best grades or whatever. And, and I think, you know, pushed by my parents in a bad way. And I think for me, I realized at the end, like who cares, man? Like, yeah it's unfair, but like, you know, uh, that wasn't the point. Mm. Yeah. And then now that you're here, now you, you also, a lot of our friends that are mutuals also left school. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what your socials like now, now that you've kind of left college and you're working full time? Complicated. I haven't put a lot of energy into it. I've like okay. intentionally been like, I moved out to S I moved here in February. I'm kind of like, was just looking for a change and, and didn't LA wasn't right. Didn't know that many people there. Michigan wasn't right. I spent four months in Michigan at the beginning of the year. Um, like first semester basically living there because I already had a lease there and uh, yeah. some friends and I just worked remotely from Michigan, which was like pretty fun, but like, was I going to do that for another six months? And, yeah. Um, but for me, I just like focused on getting like my foot in the door and then I can figure out more of my social situation. So that's like pretty much the situation. Yeah. What about like San Francisco specifically? Like, obviously we know the tech culture, Anything else I that's like appealing? Here. Okay. Yeah. So like for me, I, I just on Twitter since Gen Z Mafia COVID days, like clubhouse type thing. Where are your followers from? Would you say? Because you've also you've obviously gone, and I mean this from. You know what the, the secret is? What's up? Uh, 
like 2021, like COVID or whatever, right? Like yeah. I get on Twitter, or, like people convince me to get on Twitter, or, like Discord or whatever, sure. you know, during that time. Uh, I get on Twitter, I start tweeting stuff. I, I do pretty well because I just like tweet cool stuff. And then at some point I'm like, what were you tweeting your stuff? Like, your yeah, projects? I was like products or, you know, cool. I would, you know, dumb takes about AI or something. <laughs> but uh, I bought like 3000 followers from like India for like 20 bucks. <laughs> it's like, well, the expected value on that is like significant. And I realized like when I click on someone's profile and they say I have like less than a, like a couple hundred followers, like as a new account, I usually just don't give it time of day. Like not even about like looking sure. at it. Yeah, like a lot of people true. just dismiss you. And so I was like, oh, if I just have anything above the limit, even if it's bullshit, I don't get engaged. Yeah. Whatever, I don't care. Like yeah. at least they'll look at me for a, a couple more seconds longer. And like, slowly replaced those all like got banned. And so like, I slowly been going okay. down in follower count, but also like going up significantly. So it's like it worked that's out wild. in the end for about a year. I was like, you know, yeah, I respect that you said that on the podcast. Bro, that's crazy. I don't care. It's like, um, cause you think I, I don't worry about it now because I know I can back it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. I would have um, told you this a year ago. Interesting. Yeah. I'm one of the followers you bought, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Bangalore. I was in Bangalore. <laughs> I saw, you were not in Bangalore. <laughs> a year ago, I was in Bangalore. <laughs> it just said you followed this guy now. <laughs> you were 200 of my followers. <laughs> Dude, was the stream farm? <laughs> Imagine you're just part of a stream farm as like a regular account somehow. Yeah, I'd probably sit down there and be like, like some, bang- like, damn, this dude got bangers, you know? Right. Like, give him some extra ones, you know? <laughs> like- Applied That's- AI research. I'm like, oh, I guess I follow this guy now. So, okay, if I want to replicate kind of your success from a personal brand perspective, first, after think- I, after I buy the 3,000 followers, what would you Don't say? It's actually really bad for your engagement. Don't do that. You just... Oh, it's horrible. Because, but like, you did it. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. It's like bad. It's only good if you have like nobody and you're like trying to get off the ground. Okay. Because the problem is like it, Twitter like gives your first tweets like a random selection of your um, of your followers. Mm. And then if they don't like it, they don't send it to more. So like, it's basically like if you give it, so if you have 3000 fake okay. followers, it'll just give it to a bunch of Indians who are not on, even on the app. <laughs> <laughs> and then like you are from the, you don't even, you know. Hey man, why'd you just say Indians like okay, that? No, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Hey man. <laughs> <laughs> He said, give it to a bunch of Indians. Oh man. We we're tw- 28 minutes in. This is going to be a good one. We're good people, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, okay. You don't, you don't buy the followers now. <laughs> He's like, oh man, it's going to a bunch of them. <laughs> it's a bunch of you. It's just you. It's going to 200 of you. It's just your accounts. It's just all of Vishal. <laughs> man. But, but actually, but hold on. he actually brings up an interesting point. Okay. Because we're, we're in charge of media here yep. and community and so many young founders come in here that have a solid following. Yeah. But everyone's obsessed with growth. Yeah. Right. Everyone's a make the next viral tweet. How do I get this increment? I mean, Sam, of followers. Sam, who's sitting right there. I think you guys were just talking before we pulled up. He just went viral and had like a million views on a tweet. His yeah. follower count went from like a thousand to four thousand. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean anything if you don't use it correctly. Like so, just, so that's yeah. I think that's yeah. the point that you understand, too. And like you you're kind of getting at is like, what, what, what do we actually do with this? Go look at like uh I don't know, not Taylor Swift, uh, but we were talking about (laughs) (laughs) like, uh, look at some like random celebrities, like tweets, they get like 10 likes because like the point is, he gets good likes. Yeah. This is a celebrity for me. So (laughs) no, me too, man. Come on. Right. Yeah. Aleem. Um, yeah, but like if you look at celebrities accounts, like yeah. a lot of them have like 10 likes per and sure. it does not matter. I mean, also it's bad if you screw up your distribution and have a few follow you that don't care about your stuff. I mm. think it's bad. If you get a viral tweet and a bunch of random people follow you, it That's will not hurt good. your distribution. Yeah, interesting. Unless the right people follow you, which is why right. I think if I wanted to like really start focusing on like my Twitter, like personal account followers, I would just start writing a bunch of well thought out, but like controversial takes on AI specifically, because I think AI followers right now are valuable. Oh, and interesting. That's what, that's what Sam did. Does it have to be controversial? Right. Well, it, I, I would go against takes. I mean, this is my strategy here. Okay. I, honestly, I would say this: like, do not optimize for this. It will fuck up your brain, and then True. you're like yeah. thinking about, about Twitter shit. It's like it's not a real place, you know. Like Dave Chappelle. I would um, probably also just like make a bunch of <laughs> what is this, David? Uh, you know, Dave, Dave Chappelle. Chappelle's like Twitter is not a real place. Oh. Like they're dissing me on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is not a real place. <laughs> yeah, but if you ask Ja Rule, I, I don't know. You don't get that one. <laughs> no, I don't get that one. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was that old Chappelle. I don't know. Okay. We are 20. Yeah, but he just referred. I, I'm surprised he even watched I actually haven't Chappelle. watched that much Chappelle. I, I watched more like. He watched like six minutes of like a Comedy Central like <laughs> YouTube video and like pulled that. No, nah, come that. on. I respect it. But, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't watch it too much. Yeah. I don't watch TV shows anymore. At all? Anymore. 
It's like games. Like I, I stopped playing. I used to play games. I love games, but I, I play games all the time. And then I stopped playing games out of my startup and maybe like lose hair. I was so stressed all the time. And then like, I just didn't go back. I was but like, how do you, how do you kind of balance? <laughs> like, how do you kind of shut your brain off? Yeah. Like, I, I think there's better ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like you can also like, I mean, I think if you're basically hundred percent committed to something, there's not a lot of time for free time. And I think that's fine. Like I don't spend, I mean, I, was, I just talk to my friends. Like I just like hang out and talk to them when okay. I'm doing free time and just kind of screw around and the rest of the time I'm working and building stuff. So do you think burnout is a real thing? Oh, hundred percent. Okay. But it's only about value, value misalignment, right? Like if you, if you're doing things that are against your values or things you care, don't care about, that's how you get burned out. Um, mm, and I got burned out last year. I mean, I was working at this company that, um, you know, a great, good company. It just wasn't the thing I wanted to be doing at the moment and didn't feel right to me, you know, um, and just kind of got burned out by the end and basically was like screwed around um, and like took me a bit to find the next thing. Mm. You know, that's one thing I, I, I've noticed even after working at Fink, like I can work a lot more hours than I used to mm. and not feel burnt out. Whereas like, you remember what I was like, like last summer. Yeah. Like I wasn't able, like I had a, like insomnia um, just from like not being able to fall asleep at night because my mind would just start racing. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have that shit. Because if you just think about something all day and then you go to sleep without like turning off, yeah, like you'll just then, think about it all yeah. night. You wake in the morning, like I did not, I think thought about that one thought the entire night. It's horrible. Yeah. Can I Bad guess feeling. what you might've thought about? <laughs> Like, man, like, what are these Indian dudes thinking about <laughs> that, are, that are following me? How do I entertain these 200? Be a shot, lot of pressure. Vishal 3000, 3001. <laughs> yeah. Or just yeah. Vishal with a bunch of different last names. But do, do, do you think that's a Gen Wasim. Z thing? <laughs> no, that's his first name. <laughs> I love it. He did the joke better than we do it. It's messed up. So now if you're, if you were to like, not focus on the growth, right? And you were to still try to focus on- I, I don't think I'd focus on growth, but yeah. You wouldn't? So, no. Why? I don't think it's about growth. You don't think it's about growth? I mean, like growth of like Twitter followers? Yeah. I, I don't think that's the point. What's the point? I think the point is like, I think it's like opportunity to do cool stuff, right? Um, I think like, mm. like, like that's what it is for me. Um, I think like for Twitter has been like a place where I can meet a bunch of really incredible people who will give me some credit for like, you know, I don't have that much backing me up, but I have like, you know, people can give me credit for some future potential and then like, you know, give me some time and, and help me out. And, you know, even for like the opening eye job, you know, like this is mostly like people being like, I've seen what we'll build, you know, like I believe in him and I, I'm gonna miss giving him some credit for like the future. And and for me, like so many opportunities have come from this, it's especially like even like tech friends, like, you know, people I know in the area, mutual friends of ours, you know, like a lot of that was just like, tweeting on Twitter and finding those friends, people that help you out. You know, I moved to, uh, the reason why I came to SF was uh, this, uh, a friend of mine, like basically, you know, now it's like DM me on Twitter. Like, Hey, you want to come stay at my hacker house? Basically. Uh, really? I was like, cool. Like awesome. I wanted it out of LA. This is the perfect thing for me to do. So mm. I think that's what it's mostly about for like opportunity. Um, to be clear, I do think that Twitter is extremely valuable because like, it's like link. It's like, uh, because like the worst part about Twitter is the fact that like any tweet could go to everyone on the platform. If enough people retweeted it, which is horrible, right? Like if I can say something dumb and enough people retweet it, like sure. at some point everyone will see it, which is bad. Yeah. Like, and then why, it goes on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a better point. Yeah. But I think the key is that if you succeed, yeah, you, you have the opportunity to see an infinite amount of people on the platform, right? You can just keep mm. growing. It's like, yeah. it's like, you know, building and succeeding in public is so insanely valuable. Yeah. And like, that's what I did which is like, I'll just post my projects, except I'm not posting them to like my friends on my Snapchat story or even on LinkedIn. It's like on Twitter, which is intentionally made for like quick growth and, and lots of exposure. Yeah. You know, one thing we've always talked about of like the strategy of really go heavy on quality for long form and yeah. then just like pump out quantity for, for short form. Yeah. I've started to see, or I've started to think that on Twitter, that's not the right strategy for growing, which is why like, you know, in the past we had posted um, three times a day on Twitter for the doc. We just post a clip every yeah. single day, three times. Um, and we saw almost zero grow, like followers on Twitter. We would post these like intros that you've probably seen on my account. Yep. And then we switched to posting these like high quality intros on the doc account and we stopped posting the clips and our account started to grow again after not going for like four or five months. Then you mm. look at people like you, Stephen Tay, like even like Aleem's account. <laughs> yeah. You guys only post when you have something interesting to share or like a project to share um, and especially like Aleem, like he doesn't even retweet. Like he's very like, like we've asked yeah. him to retweet yeah. our, our, our stuff in the past. Like, hey, can you like retweet this? Yeah, I don't, I don't do it either, actually. Yeah, and yeah. he really? says no because- Nobody like cares. It's more like, I don't, people who, people I, I don't ask. know. Like I, I have my friends on here, like they're following me because they don't like me and they like, they want to ca catch up with me. Yeah, and, like, so see you what could I'm retweet doing. something. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not, yeah. yeah I mean, it depends. But. And then you like have this like associated level of quality um, or like this level of quality associated with your brand. And I think that that's probably the better way to grow now if you want to grow on Twitter. Yeah, 
I don't mind talking about this, but I, I really don't like the fact that like, I think a lot of people over, and it's something I've struggled with and, and I have to work with is just like over speciating to Twitter in a way that like, doesn't, it's just like harmful, right? If it's, it's it, you know, uh, it's like good hearts law, right? Like, like it, mm. if it becomes the goal, it ceases to become a good metric. Like Twitter followers is a good metric for your, for people, how much people care about you. But like, if you're optimizing only for Twitter followers, you actually, it's not a good metric anymore. Um, Interesting. And so, yeah, I, don't, I think like doing cool stuff is the goal and, and do, making great content is the goal. And like, mm. I think a lot of people try to like optimize for the wrong thing. It's like the elephant in the room was like, do the thing. And everyone's like, oh, like I'm working on the other thing, you know, like that's not the metric, right? Yeah. You know? How do you decide what to work on? That I think is like probably the most important skill I have, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I think like having a good cue for what excites you, what you're curious about, what you think is cool, like honestly, right? Um, and I think, uh, it took a long time to grow. Um, and I think, yeah, there's definitely some people, I think when you come like startup ideas or things they're working on, or even just like projects they ship where you're like, man, every single time this guy posts, it's something cool, right? Mm. Like you are capable, you're able to build this kind of like, I'd say like policy to like know what is interesting. And once you do, it's insanely valuable. Um, I, I, I honestly, I don't know if this is true. It might not be like, I think for me, it was just by doing the stuff I actually cared about. Like, I think this is cool. I think this is sick. Like everything I've ever mostly done recently. It's just like, this seems cool. Like nobody's done this before. I want to do it, you know? So that's basically it. Yeah. But then how would you say you refine that over time? Like for me, I, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at design in the last year, but yeah. that's specifically from working with designers on our team that are much better than me and yep. working with people on our team that have a much better sense than me. Yep. How does that relate when it comes to code? Is it just looking at GitHub repos? Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm like a, I don't think I'm that good of a coder. I don't code that much anyway. I, I code a good amount, but like it's only about the goal, right? Okay. And then how would you say you've developed a taste for what to build? I think I, you know, I build something and it doesn't work out. I'm like, okay, why didn't that work out? You know, or maybe not even that, just like continue. I, I honestly think like, I don't really listen to, I, for a while. I mean, just like in terms of context of like how I've been building. It's mostly just been like alone in my room, whatever, in my basement, whatever, like sitting around doing stuff. Like sure. I'm bored in school, I'm gonna build stuff. I'm I'm in college and like my classes kind of suck and I'm not that interested in things. I'm just gonna build stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's been my feeling. And so I actually don't, I mean, even now I haven't read that many of the startup books that everybody else reads or whatever, the blog posts or whatever. Like, I just don't read that much. I don't look at these other things. I, I mostly, you know, post things I like on Twitter and talk to my friends and um, you know, try to build a community around that. Um, and so I, I guess that's my policy. And I think most of the time it's like, even when it comes to like what I work on, it's like, I just work on what I care about and what I think is cool. And like that develops internally. Like I build something and like, did it turn out to be what I liked? And if, it, if I liked it and it didn't succeed, that's fine. I'll just keep doing it. Like that's, that's, it doesn't matter, you know? Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, I think it works out. Um, because I think even if you want to talk about like kind of audiences on Twitter, for example, like, you know, I think I've curated an audience just by doing the things I care about that actually cares about the things I care about. Like, I think I remember, I mean, this is true for a lot of young builders who are starting, we're going to build cool stuff and nobody's going to care. Right. And the reason why is that you just, people aren't listening. Right. And mm -hmm. I think it, once you start doing this over time, it just compounds. And at some point, like, uh, people start to listen and, and, and you get the right people looking. And I think that's what it's been for me. So I want to break down your design process totally specifically with, to start off config, 2023 was a few weeks ago <laughs> yeah. and you went very viral for building an entire computer yep. just using Figma. Variables. Yeah, yeah. Walk me through the process. Cause you did that in like 24 hours or something crazy. Yeah. Um, did you know you're going to do that before config? No, I think this is the thing. Like there is a part of me that like, because I've been active online for a while, I know what people like. And I know, and actually I tweeted a very long post about this. If you scroll through my thing, actually about the Alexandria project, we, you know, we can talk about it later, but like tweeted about how like, I don't like that. I know too well what people will like and what people will respond to mm. because it screws up with what I actually want to build. And like the, the perception of success and the reality of success yeah. is like so disconnected. And I think you only realize that when you come out to the bay and you're like, Oh my God, like the people that look like they're succeeding are not the people that don't look like they're succeeding are so true. Wow. Like, and, mm. and I think, so you don't want to optimize for perception, right? Um, and so once you do, you start like, you're able to ship products everybody cares about, but you actually realize like are kind of empty on the inside because nobody checks. And like, that is the worst part. I felt that about the Alexandria project, but like, it doesn't matter. Like it wasn't, you know, stuff like that. It, you just go in the wrong direction. But for like the Figma project, I, I remember um, I had built a computer in Minecraft like four years ago or something. Um, I, I forget why. I think I just got really bored and I was with my friend. I'm like, I wonder how this works. And I, like, there's an amazing blog post that on like some random Minecraft forum, like how to build a computer from scratch. It's insanely helpful. It just walks you through the entire thing. Um, and I had so much fun doing that, that I was like, I remember like seeing this, um, on, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was one, one thirty AM and I was on my phone scrolling Twitter, you know? And I saw a tweet that said like prototyping is here, right? And I look at the prototyping as if else statements have variables. And mm. I'm like, 
Prototyping in Figma specifically. Yeah, and you can do if else statements in Figma now, and you can do variables in Figma. And the second I saw that, I'm like, I know you can build a computer. Because anything with if else statements and state, you can build an entire computer from, right? Because that's just transistors and basically like, in, if you, in computer terms, it's just like a switch and like a memory. And like, that's all you need to build sure. a Turing complete computer. And I saw that and I was like, oh shit, I can build a computer in Figma. And I'm like, probably nobody else knows this right now. And so I spent the next six hours, I got up, I was like, one, this is going to go insane. I just knew it, yeah, it was going to so work. You knew. Yeah. But also, I love this shit. Like, I, I love building, I think if you ever do this from scratch, you're just kind of a blast. It's, it's so fun. It, it's just like a pretty creative process and it's so intricate in, in a very mm. um, uh, it, it kind of like stimulating way. Um, and for me, I just like sat down and like try to figure out how to do it over the next like, you know, probably 48 hours. And to be clear, I'm unemployed. That's why I could do that. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I mean, I wasn't, I was doing a lot of stuff at the time to be clear, but it was yeah. also like I had set a bunch of time apart where like I was looking for a job and in the process of going through that, pro you know, th th you know, interviewing with a lot of people, but sure. like I have, I set apart a lot of time for myself to like do what I cared about. And that's how I had time to do that. So, yeah. Let's talk about the Alexandria project. Okay, sure. Yeah. What was the thought process? What made you want to build it? I think like the, um, somebody recently was asking me like, Hey, well, like, what do you want to work on? Um, and you know, opening eye basically. And I was like, ah, I don't, I had a hard time answering also because I'm really new to the AI space. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Yeah. Are you new? I feel like you, you've, you've been in, in it, been in it for a while. So I didn't know that much. I haven't learned that much, but I didn't have the opportunity to, um, I've, I've just been very passionate about it. I actually like when GPT three launched like two years ago, um, a friend of my dad's had built like a chat app with it. Um, I remember we got access and that was really cool. And I was like, and then he made, he, some guy made a chat wrapper around it. Um, yeah. And I remember chatting with it at like midnight and like talking through it all through the night with my dad. I cuddled over a laptop mm. talking to this thing. And we were just like mind, it was like basically chat GBT except like two years ago. Sure. And I remember being there and like, I was like, I'm never going to forget this day in my life. And like ever since then, I've kind of like cared about AI and I've been very interested in it, but I never had the opportunity to actually do it or like, I was doing startups mm. that are adjacent or doing other things like the discord bot started out as like an NLP project. I want to do like AI moderation. We did that for a bit. We like flag messages that are problematic, but nobody cares. Like that's not the tool that matters in that space. Sure. And so like, I guess in terms of how much I know about what I want to do, I know very little, you know? Um, but anyways, I, you know, this guy was asking like, what do you care about? Um, or like, what do you want to work on? And I think for me, I was like the best projects I've ever built. I think very, or the best thing I've made have not really become something I like, had a bunch of passion for. That I want to work on, there are good projects like that, like Figma computers. Like I just wanted to do it. And I wanted, I knew I would really enjoy it. Um, it comes from like going through things and realizing like, why has no one done this? And like somebody needs to do this and okay, nobody else is doing it. So I have to, you know, and for the Alexandria project it was basically like, I was interested in embeddings and learning what embeddings do. If you don't mess around with embeddings, please mess around with embeddings. They're like insanely useful. Um, with, uh, How would know. you describe embeddings to someone that's never had it explained to them? Embeddings like basically just map a sequence of text, like a, you know, a chapter or a paragraph or a sentence or a word, right. To a certain fixed number, uh, a set, set of numbers. So it's like one, two, three, four, five or something. Right. Or, um, or like five numbers. Right. Um, and then the, the basic principle is that like words that are similar to each other, each other or sentences that are similar to each other or like paragraphs that are similar to each other should be kind of like have similar numbers and then things that are different should have different numbers, I guess is like the best idea. Yeah. And then if you imagine if you like plotted that on like a chart, you'd see like, Oh, like, all the things related to like, you know, cats are on this side of the board and then dogs on the other side of the board. Right. Sure. And so like, I, I like walking my dog and then like a entire paragraph about like dog breeding is like on the side of the board. It doesn't matter. It's all like the things related to dogs. Yeah. And like, it lets computers kind of like think about topics and subjects in the way that humans do, which is like really powerful um, in some ways. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you can do search, for example, if you're like, oh, if you embed your search query, if I'm looking for this thing, it's like search is really hard with computers, but it's just matching single words. Like, does it include this word? And if it does, you give that. So it's just command mm -hmm. F. Yeah. And that's the difference between command F and then. And embeddings just do like a kind of like a meaning based search. And um, so if that, is that yeah. good explanation. Okay. <laughs> and so embeddings for me, I was like basically trying to learn the space. I didn't fully understand it. I'm like, this seems like a cool topic. Um, and I was like, I wonder if there's like large data sets of embedding somewhere. Like, can I go find like all of Wikipedia embedded so I can like mess around with it? Yeah. And it turned out like there kind of wasn't, I couldn't find it. And for example, one thing I was trying to do was uh, science. Like science is like the immediate thing you probably want to do for, like looking for research papers or something like that because it's very useful. Like searching for research papers is hard, would be pretty easy to do with embeddings. I'm like, cool, like, I want to look for that. Like that seems something to like kind of mess around on. And like the embeddings for all research just didn't exist. I was like, well, I was looking for the archive of embeddings and nobody had done it before. And I was like kind of confused. Like why does why this not? exist already? Yeah. Because also like embeddings are right now, it's like about opening eyes cost is like a dollar per 10 million embeddings. Mm. If you do it correctly, you can get a dollar per a hundred million embeddings. Um, I mean like a hundred million uh, tokens. Sure. Um, and like, I mean the Bible is about a million tokens. So like you can get a hundred Bibles for a dollar. Wow. Like it's, 
it's basically free. Yeah. And, and so for me, I was like, well, like I'll just have to do it. And so I, I got my buddy James, who's, who's the greatest. And I was like, we got to do this. We got to hop on this. And so we basically just did that. And, and then the next couple of days we like figured out how to do it and embedded the whole thing and then launched it. Um, and like it cost us like the embedding cost was like $30. It was like nothing That's crazy. And we did like 2.2 million research papers. Right. And like, it's actually useful because now you can have this and now you can like search for research papers and it like understands what you're meaning. You're like, I want to look for a research paper about dogs, but you don't know like the weird scientific phrasing for like what a dog is. Or yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So one thing that's also interesting to me is you mentioned you worked on this project with James. Your friend. Yeah. Yeah. What is it like for you to split up projects with like when you're working with on a, on a technical project with a friend, how do you split that up, especially when you're working on it at the same time? Because I feel like async work is really easy. Yeah. From a video perspective, it's like, okay, you can go on, you can have revisions and then you look over a version, then you edit it. And even from like GitHub, like pulling async kind of makes sense. But then when you're working on a side project with a friend, you're not using linear boards, you're not using Notion, no yep. daily standups. What is it like to actually work on a project? So I've been always in favor of, I mean, very often building in my room kind of alone. I've kind of like monolithic. Like I, I taught myself every skill I could learn just because I wanted to. Like for example, like design and Figma, it was like me and three guys for Alter when you're know, first building this Discord bot startup. Yeah. And you know, um, they're like, we need somebody to design the interface. And I'm like, I don't know, nobody here knows design, but like I did some graphic, like designing some t-shirts like a year ago and I'm like, I'll jump in. <laughs> and so I just teach myself Figma and like from there, I've like been able to learn design at yeah. a high level just by teaching myself and same with, same with coding. Actually, I didn't know React development or JS like very well at all until Alter started and two guys, Santi and, and Dex, they were great guys. Um, both of them knew this. They, they had done basically like a year at another startup. And I was like, yeah. you guys code. I'm just going to watch you and I'll learn as you go. Wow. And like in the next like basically month, I just got myself up the seed and started working. And to be clear, like I didn't fully understand React. Actually, I didn't fully understand React until very recently when I did the, just for prepare for interviews. But yeah. like for a while, I was like, I don't care what use effect does. I know what it creates in the page and like I'll do, go from I there. I still don't know what use effect does, but I know <laughs> how to use it. So I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was basically what my process was of mm. just kind of like, you know, picking things up fast and, and teaching myself everything. And so in terms of collaboration, I've always liked to, I've been just practice for a while being very good at doing everything myself. Um, but then, you know, when it comes to like team collaboration, it's, it's, it's complicated because if it is a project when, in which I can like ship it entirely myself, I'll usually try to find a way in which like, for example, James just knows research. He's, he does bio work. And so like I was able to get, use his knowledge and, and his kind of advice and also having his fresh perspective on like computer science and coding, and et cetera. And that really kind of added to the project. Well, like I handled mm -hmm. one thing and he handled the other. Gotcha. That was great. Uh, but in terms of like team environments, I think it really depends. I mean, like usually if it's a big enough team where you're going to really collaborate on the same stuff, I think, yeah, you got to kind of change the workflow into more uh, a different type of thing. Yeah. So from working at OpenAI, yep. you've been there for a bit. Yep. Um, what is the team environment like? What is the culture like? What is the actual workflows from what you can say? What is that like? Yeah, so this is today, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I've been here for like five days total. <laughs> so like, please, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> um, realistically, a lot of people are academics. You know, like a lot of people on my first day, a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, I'm like XPH, I'm a PhD, I'm coming over here now. Um, I mean like, even a lot of people that are not necessarily uh, on um, who are engineers are also have like some AI background, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's, it's been pretty, you know, so far early experience has been great. Um, you know, I've previously worked at Comsor, the, the, the company that acquired my last startup. And, you know, uh, that was, um, that was a remote experience and was already async. And that was actually also great. We're like, you know, everybody's working asynchronously and doing their own thing and kind of left to the a high trust environment. And I think that works really, really well in teams. And it seems like OpenAI also has that idea where like they have a lot of researchers and in a way that they have a high trust of like people working on their mm. right, stuff they want to do and working on valuable stuff for the company. You what know? are you most excited to build there? Like long term? It's hard to say. And actually I'll just answer with what I said before, yeah. which is I'm excited to build the biggest thing that nobody thought of before. Right. Mm. Which is like, I think finding the thing that I'm like, I don't necessarily want to build, but nobody's done it before. So I have to go do it because nobody else is going to mm. kind of thing. I'm like, so that's kind of your sweet spot of like how you figure out. Cause those two projects you mentioned have the same theme. Of, yeah. I yeah. guess I feel like obligations and yeah. that's fine. I think like all, I think like the best leaders are the ones that like are just don't really want to lead, but kind of like are obligated to do so. And I think it's the same thing for mm. kind of like building in some ways. Right. Like it's like, you know, you, um, you're like, I, you know, you find something like this is too good of an opportunity to pass down. I have to do this, you know, yeah. and like at the end of the day, you enjoy it and I enjoy everything mm -hmm. I do. And as you talk about burnout, I don't do anything. I think I, that goes against what I care about and I enjoy and et cetera. But, mm. um, 
Yeah. I mean, even in terms of collaboration, this is something I found I've had a really hard time finding people to collaborate with. I think the reason why is I think very few people I know have kind of been able to match my energy and my focus and my determination for the things I want to do. I mostly just, and the reason why is mostly curiosity. I'm like, I'm just excited. Like if you come to me and we talk for an hour, like we'll have an idea by the end of it. I'm like, dude, let's go yeah. do this thing. And they're like, yeah, kind of maybe. And it might help out a bit, but you're just going to flake off or not really fully do it. And I'm like mm. extremely excited to go build and create and create and, and be curious. And like, you have so much energy if you do that. And um, finding people with an equal amount of that is difficult. And then collaboration, if you have like a non-synced energy is also very difficult. Right? Yeah. And so, I guess that's kind of a story of, mm. you know what, one thing experience. that's interesting, um, based off your experience and then also looking at other people our age kind of on Twitter, it feels like now and now more younger people are now they have the leverage to work on projects that actually matter, whether it's, whether it's through code or whether it's through like content. Now people our age, probably for the first time in history are able to work on things from their bedroom without much money and at scale, be able to impact people all across the world. Obviously, you saw this before at a lot of the projects you did before, and then now you see it at OpenAI. Um, what are some projects that you think people can do specifically right now with code that have high leverage to impact people everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of like people can do impactful stuff anywhere, like I think that is true. Like, don't get me wrong, it's something I really truly believe in, and the thing I'm most excited about, which is like, you know, um, like what is the kind of like labor efficiency of our world is extremely low, right? In yeah. a way that like how many people are building startups, like people in this area, like there's like, you know, it's like 230 million people in Pakistan, right? And you're like, what the hell, right? Like there's how, like how many of the exposure to anything? Like sure. how many kids, there's like um, 25% of the world is younger than 15, like for example, right? Yeah. And you're like, how many of those people have any access at all to like to create or to compete at all? And most people, like I, I realized this recently when I was applying to colleges, I'm like, I'm not really competing against anyone else in the world except the people in like basically my state. And I'm like, that's kind of fucked up. Like the fact that like, you're living in any place in the world, like you can't, there's not, sure. the world is yeah. very anti-competitive mm -hmm. and I'm excited for what kind of tech can do and, and just what, you know, computers and the internet have done in a way that anyone can compete with anyone in some sense. Um, that being said, I would say that it's kind of tough. And the reason why is like, I think, I think maybe somebody, I think Paul Graham maybe said this, that like startups is like very unintuitive. And like founders consistently try to like just intuit how it's supposed to work and it usually doesn't work out very well. Um, and I think this is true. Like I think like product thinking and thinking about how to design and otherwise is like very tough and like not actually com comes naturally to a lot of people. And like for me, I actually got this by just like talking to people in Gen Z Mafia Discord server. Like I was the worst. And I kind of talked to people enough and like they had a lot of experience of just be living in the Bay and talking to people all this time. I kind of yeah. picked it up. I don't think you realize how much that like the average person in this area just has natural product thinking skills about like what mm -hmm. people like, how to build things for people. Like thinking if I just pitch you a product right now, you could poke holes in it. And maybe they're sure. not the right holes to poke through, but everyone here can poke holes in things. And that's so, so rare actually right um and so in, in my experience i think the thing that people should be doing is like realizing there's a lot of skills i don't have i need to go get myself or read the books or go into the twitter i, I think twitter is great just because you can go talk to the people you can just like you know reply to whoever you want that you look up to and they'll probably respond to you right if you just like comment a tweet on there and you seem like you're doing something cool and so yeah i mean in terms of projects though specifically like what people should be working on um i think that's hard to say um i i, I don't know i think like i don't think young people should be trying to do something that like is um, a unicorn. God, no. Forget the money stat or like how much you raise. Jesus Christ. I mean, I can't think of <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, for me, like I think um, the, the, the pattern I felt I followed and, and the reason why I ship fa like very short projects fast is mostly that like there's like a log curve of value you get from anything you do right um, in projects. And so like the first two days of like learning an entirely new subject, if you guys go home and build a computer in Minecraft or something, right, you're going to learn like shit ton for the first 24 hours and like a great amount for the next 48. But like it just keeps going down over that. Yeah. And then like to be clear, there's tons of value at the end of this log curve. Like if you stick on this, right, mm -hmm. and you spend like 10 years in one area or, or even just three years in one area, by the end of that, you'd know a lot more because it, the, the small pits really matter. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like if you spend six months on something, but you're not totally really trying to maximize your speed of learning like dude do a project for three weeks two weeks cut yourself make, give yourself a time if i have to ship something in this space for two weeks learn it and then start unless it's going to go all the way if it's a startup it's going to actually take off for us there's a discord but i thought i was going to quit after it the idea is like we're just going to fire off a lot of shots the first one just hit and we're like okay we have to commit now and we did right and i think but if it's not worth committing to like a figma computer i'm not adding a single more feature to that thing right? probably not and the reason why is like it would be cool, but like, it's not worth my time, right? Yeah, like yeah. I'm young, you're young, you're, you should be exploring and learning and doing things. If you have something that really takes off, absolutely go for it. Go chase that log curve all the way down. But if it's not going to work out, like what are you doing? You know, like don't spend a bunch of time on it. If it's not going to work out for you, you're not learning that much. Um, and so I guess that's my kind of suggestion there, which is like learn, explore. I think Ali Partovi has like a blog post about this, which is like explore, don't commit. That I think is amazing. Um, I think he makes a great point. There's like, 
constantly college students are trying to like commit to go build a startup for four years. I'm like, dude, yeah. what are you doing? Like, this is a time in which you are supposed to explore. Don't commit to things, explore a bunch of different things. You can commit later. And like, actually that's where a lot of value is. And I think that's absolutely true. But how much of that is pressure? From like social media pressure from just seeing, like you said, the success, it's people who look successful aren't the people it's not that, it's not, yeah, pressure, it's not at all. pressure at all. I think the, the, I mean, it kind of is, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of pressure yeah. in the world, but I would say that like, okay, even like when I talk to people who are just starting out building, the thing they always pitch me is like vastly ambitious and like kind of cool, but like still insanely ambitious. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. like I got, got this guy DMing me the other day. He's like, hey, Will, I'm trying to get started coding. I'm like, he's like, I'm trying to build a blockchain. You know, I'm mm. like, don't start with a blockchain if you're just starting coding. Like, you want to do something so go different. build snake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think this idea, though, is like, if you're young and you're looking up, like, oh, I want to do something ambitious, and that's yeah. what you've seen before. as like, what's large? Mm. Um, and so, I guess that's that's one one uh, one thing there. So, if I want to start coding tomorrow, what what project are you going to tell me to build? Something you like. You know what my first website is? Um, what? It's not my first website. It's probably like my second or third. No, it's my second or something. It's myfirstnda.com. I think it's still up. I'm actually pretty sure it's still up. Um, it's my first non-disclosure agreement. It's like a it's like a pink non-disclosure agreement. The idea is, you know, my first shaving kit, that thing we will give kids. It's like sure. my first non-disclosure agreement. So it's like a it's like a <laughs> non-disclosure <laughs> agreement for our kids. It's the dumbest idea I ever thought of in my life. But I was like, this is kind of funny. It, yeah. also, you should check it. It's like it's like entirely pink. I've used it before to like make someone sign an NDA. Oh my god. What is it? It's Eric. just my first NDA.com. My first NDA.com. It's amazing. It's my it's one of the favorite things I've ever built, actually. <laughs> it's just pink. pink. Hey, is Emily being a B word? Hey, man. Damn, Emily. Anyways, you can do command P and you can print it out and use it. Um, <laughs> I'm not liable for anything you do on there. I realize I just said that it's legal. It's not legal. I, I don't know. I don't. I'm not a lawyer. How old were you when you made this? I don't know. This is like this is the same thing, like 17, 18 or something. Well, I think that's the biggest thing I've gotten from everything he said. Is like there, no one should tell you what to build. You should also, why did I do that? And why did I have energy doing spending a bunch of time yeah. on this? I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was funny. And like the point is most of my products I've done because I thought it was funny or cool or interesting or exciting. Mm. And like, that's why I do stuff. And it gives you outmatched energy and, and excitement for things. Mm. And like, honestly, what, if you're going to build the first thing, one, try to reset your kind of focus towards like, okay, there's one, two key things here. Okay. I think are really helpful. One thing is a lot of, a lot of people's like kind of, uh, kind of reward kind of like function basically is like kind of, based off of like the process. How much do you enjoy the process of building? Like most people yeah. start off like this. We're like, oh, I'm not enjoying the project anymore, so I quit. I'm like, mm. no, you, you should rewire yourself to only care about the ship, which is like, get it out there, see, pe get people to use it. If you're only focusing on your process, because like for me, I will walk through like miles of shit of like any project for the result, for what get, can happen. Yeah, yeah. End, you know, um, and I think that's one thing. And the other thing is like, you know, just kind of do something like, rewire your brain to think about something simple that's exciting. Like that's simple. It's just a React website. It's not even that well coded, yeah. but it's exciting and something I enjoy and you can just keep going up from there. Um, and like even just like screwing around with a website is like something mm. that you should start at. Like just go build something dumb. Like that's actually the best advice I have. Um, or build a game. Games are great. We all love games. And so building a game is like fun and you learn so much coding doing a game. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, one thing that was interesting, I feel like the people that from my friends that did really well on their like side projects at Berkeley are yep. people that wouldn't tell you what they were building until it was done. And the thought process oh, behind that was, I don't want to get the satisfaction of you saying, oh, that's super cool before I built the thing, because that'll be enough to like derail me from actually building the thing. That's really smart. I haven't heard of that before. Oh, that's but that interesting. Sounds right. yeah. oh. One thing that I've found, especially from our podcast, but also from seeing guys in the lab or from seeing people in the lab kind of build their projects yep. is the two week development cycle or like the one month development cycle. Yes. Just get the thing out. Don't spend too much time trying to like don't spend a month on customer research and then a month on the design and then a month on marketing. Yep. Just actually like get the thing out and see what people think. I think that's probably been the biggest. Takeaway. I think there's a small nuance here that a lot of people miss. There's like extremely important. And I think it's what I tell to a lot of people is that like anyone can make something cool in two months, right? Like mm. you could make something like if you have two months to work on something, like you can do something that just because of the amount of time you spend on a certain area that yeah. nobody's done before. Right. Mm. Um, but if you have two weeks, you have to think about what's simple, achievable and like actually cool too. And that's yeah. a hard problem. And that gets you thinking like I have so many people like I'm going to build a blockchain messenger. I'm like, that's cool. If you spend eight months on that and you do it well, it's going to be cool no matter what, mm. what's cool in two weeks. Like anyone can build oh, a social media app. It has totally all the features and it's pretty cool. Like, yeah, great sure. months do something in two weeks. And like, I mm. think that forces you to like actually think hard and mm. the log curve, you don't spend a bunch of time on something. It's not worth it, et cetera. So, so do you think people, what are, okay. What, what are your thoughts on, the whole concept of take bigger swings. 
I mean, I'm trying to take that advice, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. I'm, I'm still taking that. I think I haven't been ambitious enough. I, I didn't think in many ways. Um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people come, and this is just a pattern I've seen, which is like, we went from, you know, high school, middle school, et cetera, you know, trying to build stuff and going from that to Silicon Valley and building startups and even being in this world is incredible. Um, and that was like a thousand X for us. We went from like zero X to a thousand X and people come out here and I think they, they forget how to do that again, which is like, it was very, 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 very uncomfortable to go from like zero to a thousand X. And it took a lot of energy and do a bunch of stuff. that was like, you didn't know you could do and you had to push yourself a mm. lot. And like people forget to do that again. If they come out here and like, okay, now I'm a startup founder. I'm fine. You know, like, no, you shouldn't do that. That was another thousand X. Like just push yourself to do something that's uncomfortable. This doesn't mean like, oh, go build a, the worst thing actually. Is it like, I meet a bunch of guys that are trying to do this with like the startup valuation. They built the startup, they worked and they're like, okay, now I need to make something that's a hundred X the size. Yeah. Like, no, you fucked up. And all these guys have never gotten anywhere because as soon as you're like, oh, I'm going to make a billion dollar company. Like that's not how you get there. You just mm. go back and like, fuck everyone else. I'm going back to like, go tinker around with shit and like do something that nobody else believes in and think is kind of stupid or makes no money at the start. And then you keep going and you just follow your curiosity to get back where you started. Yeah. But you still push yourself to do that in a more interesting area or you push yourself to go learn something you didn't think you could learn. Mm. Like, I mean, so many guys like, oh, I taught myself coding, but now I'm not going to learn design. Like I'm a coder guy. I'm like, what the hell? Just go push yourself and do something you haven't done before. You know? So I don't know. What do you yeah. think about being a generalist versus being a specialist? Growing up, I had a lot of different projects that made me get a lot of different skills. So like I learned how to make videos to be a yep. filmmaker. I learned how to design to make a clothing brand. Um, I kind of learned public speaking from a podcast. Like I had a lot of different things that I did. And then once I got to F Anchor, once I got to SF, yep. now I started learning how to code. Now I learned how Figma works. Yep. Um, all of these like different things. I've started realizing in, well, I guess actually no, it's in phases. So last year I started realizing I wanted to be more of a generalist. Yep. I wanted to teach myself how to code. I wanted to do a lot of those things and I did. So yep. now I understand React, still don't know what use effect does, but like for the most part I can build like a Who does? <laughs> I can build like I can build most of a project. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm starting to think the level two comes from being or like the next level comes from specializing in something better than better than anyone else can do. Mm. Like if you are the person that can now that I'm surrounded by people much smarter than me. Yeah. I, I feel like the I provide the most value from understanding one thing really well. And for a while I thought that that was marketing. Like I understand marketing, I think better than most people. Yep. But then now I'm thinking like, oh shoot, maybe I should be doing that from a product perspective. Or what if that was, what if now that I'm good enough at marketing, what if I start focusing on like programming? Yeah. And it's not something that I've been toying with in my mind for the last like few. It sounds like you weeks. want to do it. I mean, it sounds like you want to do it. So I'll do, I would go for it. Yeah. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, I mean, to be clear, I think I've, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very athletic. I kind of suck at board games compared to my younger brother. Who's like, did you just say you're not athletic? You suck at board games. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm not <laughs> very athletic. I also suck at board games. My brother's better at me at chess or whatever. Like I, I lost at a lot of things what as a kid. Part of the athletic journey. <laughs> do you need to be? <laughs> oh, sorry. Does it not correlate? <laughs> I just love the way you said it. Said it again. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it again. You just, yeah, you just rephrased it. <laughs> I'll do it in reverse. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, do you so want to do chess boxing? That sounds fun, actually. I want to learn jujitsu. Um, <laughs> we have a few jujitsu guys here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like chess. It's like it's like physical chess. It's anything as rock climbing. Physical chess. The reason why all the sports in the Bay are like mental, the physical challenges disguised as uh, I mean, like yeah, huh. like mental challenges disguised as physical ones. It's like dudes have two personalities. Do they go rock climbing or they start jujitsu? Because they're both like uh, they're both like problem solving, but they look physical, right? Like mm-hmm. rock climbing is about solving physical problems. Jujitsu is not martial art problems, but it's more about kind of mind and body stuff. You could do, you, I mean, you're long, do this? <laughs> yeah, you're long. Yeah. I mean, you have what? Torso stand up? <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you don't gotta stand up, you're good, you're good. I promise you, you're okay. I'm 6'3". Just, oh, you're 6'3". Yeah. What's your wingspan? Do you know? Longer than my- uh, Oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 good. you're gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You're gonna be good. After this podcast, he's gonna come to you, he's like, have you ever thought of playing a basketball professionally? <laughs> I know I cannot that. jump. You no. can't jump. I mean, oh, you don't need to jump for yeah. jujitsu. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> like talking about basketball. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh. Yeah, you okay. don't need to be able to jump for chess. Yeah, <laughs> I don't jump for chess. Yeah. No, you have the measurables. Yeah, for chess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a physique for chess. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst diss. Oh my god. <laughs> you have the physique for chess. Yeah. So about being a generalist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so about being a generalist and gets small. That's that's the general. Yeah, um, I just I'm like you know I, I grew up being bad at shit, like like being specialist. I, like I wasn't necessarily good at any specific thing. Um, mm. and I think I was the kind of generalist guy. You know, like you know, 
my younger brother is better at board games. All my friends are better at sports. You know, I was, sure. was like, I didn't have my thing. And so you're talking to someone who's like basically a generalist who's good at being a generalist. Of course I'm like, oh yeah, generalism is great. Um, I do think pushing yourself to learn basically anything and everything is really important. Um, Oh, one thing I think most people don't think about is that like everyone is kind of exactly, it's a Steve Jobs quote, like, you know, like people, um, everything in the world was built by people no smarter than you. Right. And I think people don't really actually believe that. And I yeah. think, you know, I think there's a lot of differences in people. It's not the point. The point is that like generally the variance across any given person is like, they have a bunch of things that you're, they're good at and you're, sure. you're good at. And I think people don't realize that. And uh, the other thing is like, if I bring like two re golden retrievers into this room and I'm like, what's the difference between these two dogs? Please you're don't. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that 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 one's that one's smarter, and then that one's better at fetch. They're here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're here. Okay, but if you brought them, I brought them into the room and asked them like, "What's the difference between these two dogs?" You're gonna be like, "They're the same fucking dog, man. Like they're the same dog, yeah. right?" But if you look at two like humans, we're like, "Oh, he likes rock music. I like indie music, and I wear like you know rings and shit." Like I don't know. And the dogs probably look at each other and like, "Oh, his tail's longer than mine." I don't know. Sure, like, yeah, we're so I know different. what you're saying. Like, we're yeah. good at pointing out the differences in each other, and like yeah. at the end of the day, they're pretty quite minor, especially when it comes to skills. Like we're generalized, like you know couple hundred years ago, everyone, nobody could read or write, right? Mm. Like, and was like, oh, like only the top elite could read or write. And I'm sure. sure we back then on our podcast in the medieval ages were like, nobody could ever read or write. <laughs> that was just hanging out. Well, like, hey man, yeah, nobody could read or write. We're like, what do you think about that? I, I I mean, he's like, I built a computer. <laughs> in Minecraft, no, but it's real life. <laughs> That'd be fun. I don't know. Like, I think us hanging out in the monastery, just being like, hey, man, like, how's it going? Like, you know, having a podcast, but like in real. You think? That's just hanging out. Yeah, you just described <laughs> hanging out, man. Hanging yeah. out. No, I was, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do that tweet was. <laughs> wait till oh, he, the podcast one? Yeah. yeah, the guy's like, we just had a yeah, podcast. Yeah, we, we talked about this. Yeah. It's like, wait till he finds out about fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do this thing. Oh, yeah, I got you. We I do this it. thing at the end of our episodes. Okay, sounds good. If you thought the rest was bad, wait till, wait till you hear this. So let's go. I went, I went through all your tweets. Yay. But it's, <laughs> it's also because I've read all your tweets 200 times because I followed you 200 times because I am your farm right. in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> day one, day one. Day one follower here. This is one of the few times he's gone through someone's Twitter before the podcast and been like, yo, this dude is really smart. <laughs> he is. You, you are smart. But luckily, I caught this one. <laughs> yes. Okay, January twenty third. Oh shit! You said I'm eating from Taco Bell. Yes. My Doritos Loco Supreme and Cinnabon bites, and sipping my Mountain Dew Baja Blast, <laughs> and thinking that a caveman might die of stimulation <laughs> if they ate this. That was a fact. This I've food had is so insanely engineered. <laughs> Have you been it's to Taco Bell recently? So, I th so the reason I, I like, I explodes. love this is Dude, I love like, Taco Bell. Yes. And shout out Shafak, our head of operations. He loves Taco Bell. Oh my he God. has a secret way of ordering shit. Yeah. That's like revolutionary. Revolutionary. Great. Baja Blast, man. Baja Cinnabon. Blast is fit. Do you want me to give you the revolutionary shit? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. So it originally started on a quesarito. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Take, all good things start. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Take the rice out. Got it. It ruins the complexion. Put the potatoes Complexion? in for the rice because it makes everything too <laughs> okay, soggy okay, and okay. soft. Put potatoes in <laughs> and add a black, uh, not black, a uh, refried bean layer. Okay. And you can take the meat out if you want to. You don't have to. You can okay. leave the meat in, but basically put in refried beans and then put in potatoes <laughs> instead of the rice. Okay. I'm taking notes here. This is, I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you think a man would think about that? This is about building me. <laughs> this is what build. This is how you find build the right Casarita things to work on. Yeah, I build things. But how is yeah? How has Taco Bell changed the way you build? <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? Oh, oh, it's a joke to you, huh? Yeah, this whole thing something. is a joke. Next, it makes me less productive. I like fucking pass out after I did it. Yeah, he gave you a real answer. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so I got another good one. I'm gonna be honest. If you and your friends post the same pictures, <laughs> I'm only liking one of them. Can't dilute my reputation like that. No free clout. <laughs> so you do think about the growth. <laughs> yeah, this is me trolling my friends on Instagram. But yeah, yeah. They this both, is wild. Yeah, they both posted the same tweet, uh, fucking image. And I was like, I'm not liking both, you know? How do no, you pick? No free clout, you know? <laughs> how, do you, how do you pick? Yeah. What, what did the other guy pay you that the other guy didn't? I don't know, it's vibes, you know? Okay. Yeah, That's, but it's favoritism. You're just picking who who. I think I did you the, like the one more. that came out first, you know? The one that came out first. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a race. So yeah, if we go race. back and someone scraped this, yeah, someone watching. Can someone Aleem, scrape this can you and build figure a this out? For this? Right. Yeah. 
This is another good one. I want to get better at Latin so I can say dumb shit that sounds smart. <laughs> Dude, but I hit you with the lorem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like my tweets too much. <laughs> Did you get better at Latin? No, I, I don't know Latin. My, my friend Cole does. He's like, yeah. You got to be in Spanish. <laughs> I gotta be in Spanish. Wait, what did he get in line? We don't know. All right, let's do this one because this is an Avi Schiffman special. <sighs> the more I come back to Dune, the <laughs> more it feels like the best movie I've seen in years. Why are you guys both obsessed with Dune? The movie's quite good. It's that good? It's a great movie, but why you always got to yeah, tweet about it? Yeah, it's just like, a, yeah, you guys like- So I accidentally watched it like five times. Like you, you guys, you, Dude doesn't watch TV shows, but he accidentally watched the movie. Like, like, my friends are like, hey, you want to go to Dune? And everybody just like didn't watch it and uh, kept inviting me. So I just kept going. But if you watch a movie five times, by the end, you're like, oh my God, it's a masterpiece. Wait, 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 <laughs> explain the Dune five times again. I like my friends like wanted to see Dune, but like all out of order and they kept inviting me. So I just kept going. And you like, said yes? Yeah, why not? I don't no, know. We've been trying to go to Spider-Man uh, yeah. for like two the, months. The, the, this this guy's really busy. Huh? Yeah, this guy has a full schedule. This, is a this year guy went to see Dune like five ago, times. Yeah, it's a year ago. Were you unemployed? <laughs> I mean, I can't say. <laughs> I was working a job, but like, was I working? You know. <laughs> working hard or hardly working? Hard, hardly working. This is another problem in tech. But another problem. We don't have a time in this podcast. Yeah, don't go, go remote, it. guys. <laughs> don't. All right, so, so so we should watch Dune. Have you seen Dune? I'm done watching. Yeah, only if you watch it five times. <laughs> Bro, we've it's been like the fifth time I picked this up. <laughs> we've been trying to watch Spider Man for the last like two months. We're like, like the yeah. new Spider Man. But he wants to watch the old one before he watches the oh, new yeah, one. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, I don't watch movies though, <laughs> unless it's Dune. You watch Dune five times, but you don't watch. I'm movies. heads down. I can't. I can't watch it. I don't watch. This anything. one is crazy. This this tweet is crazy. Kind of funny how many of y'all were chatting with me when I was still in high school. Dangerous how much you listen to the opinions of someone who can't drive. <laughs> yeah, Can I, can't, drive? I still can't drive. Oh my God. That sounded like a bar. That sounded like a, you ever rap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we got to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, please. Yeah. No, I can't rap. You can't rap? You sure? Yeah. All right, fine. You just read my tweets. Yeah. In, in a certain voice, if you read the tweets, it kind of sounds like a rap. Taco Bell. <laughs> We'll end on this good. one. This this one I think is my favorite because it's the more most pragmatic. He said, "Our real world is far cooler than oh, the ones we invent one. on screen." One. How is that a bad that's one? A bad one. Everyone's so fascinated but you gotta with the picture. It's a cool picture. This guy did. Uh, this guy did, like, goes into a cool building picture. and take pictures. Oh, that's direction. Just tell me this: Is the real world cooler than Mid Journey? Ooh, that one hurts. Just like my soul. Why? Type of question. You got to answer. No. No. He's no. not answering the question. You're not answering or you said no? I don't know. All of the above. I'll take that as a Majority yes. Majority team seem pretty cool. So. I don't care about the team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What does that question mean? I don't know. Like I'm, saying, I'm saying people are like, oh, you've seen this in Mid Journey, like this creation of this like world. And I was like, bro, go outside, man. Yeah, I'm like, pretty scared of that. Though. You ever been to that. Iceland? Oh, I have been to Iceland. Actually. Have you? I'm going to move to Iceland one day. Have you seen the Northern Lights? No. Oh. I just drove, drove around the country. It's so really fun. Nice. You just drove around? Yeah, yeah. We well, did I the whole road. Say again? I thought you can't drive. I am drive. <laughs> Just no license. <laughs> no license. No license. Gotcha. Yeah. It's like that. What's that? What's that one quote? It's like the real world. No, the digital world used to be an escape from the real world. Now the real world is an escape from the digital one. Mm. Who said that? Mm. I have no idea. Yeah. I posted on Gandhi. LinkedIn once. <laughs> <laughs> it was, what's his face? Uh, everything was, what's the smart dude? Einstein. <laughs> Shouldn't it take me that long? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I think this is a good place. To I'm gonna hit you with a rapid fire, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, sounds good. Favorite movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite movie? Okay, let me actually give you a good response here. Okay. Um. Uh. Ooh, there's a bunch of really good movies. What is a good movie? I don't know. I, I like you know a lot of. It. Um. So here's the problem. I watch a lot. I my parents are very into movies. I watch a lot of movies with, with my family, so I don't want to give you a bad answer because it's like not a. I don't. It's a movie I want to stand behind. You know. So I don't know. I will have to think about it. I have like a giant list of movies. If you wanna, if we can come back to it. Yeah, yeah, come back to it. I'll okay. think about it. Yeah, <laughs> this one's not going to be better. Favorite book? Favorite book? Um, there's a book called Hunger by Newt Thompson. Why? Um, it's about a homeless guy, um, written by a homeless guy. It's basically an autobiography about being homeless and not eating. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not about his struggle. I think our society a lot right now is about like struggle with the world and like you know. Uh, it's not about hunger though. It's really about a struggle with himself. It's about Wait, shame. Is that guilt. the book that gets like more crazy as? No, it, it is not a famous book or not a lot of people okay, made this. Never mind. My English teacher just randomly gave it to me. But um, uh, it, it's a complicated book. It's very like kind of philosophical, but I think it's about like shame and guilt and like struggling with yourself in, in a really interesting way that I think you're going to read it and be like, this book is very simple, but like it kind of is just 
surprisingly profound, I guess. Mm. Like, yeah. I'll just say, so like a tiny part from it just to sell you on it. Like, it's about this like, homeless guy, and like one day somebody basically like, gives him $100, and, like, just out of a gift of their heart. And like, he basically like, gets the $100 and like, yeah, has been, hasn't been eating for weeks. And like, this is probably like a true event. Like, he's basically writing about his own no. life. Um, and then like one day, I think he basically, after he gets the $100, he like has it. And then instead of like saving it, he just like, goes into a like steak restaurant and buys a steak and like, you know, a glass of milk and like eats it and then just like throws it up outside. Right. Oh, and there's something about the idea of like, I don't know, like what it means to be a person. And like when you, you know, like why does that feel so human of like, you, he just wants to be a person more than he wants to not starve. He wants to feel proud of himself and, and, and the shame of being a homeless and like wanting to yeah. feel like a real person in some way. I don't know. That, I'm, I'm just thinking of Arv when he said that, the whole story. Do you know Arv? Yeah, of course I know. Who doesn't know Arv? That's other thing. Yeah. <laughs> just reminds me of something Arv Khan would do. <laughs> what do you mean? He might do that. <laughs> you don't think so? How well do you know him? I don't know him enough. You know, that's the problem. Mm. I know like all the, I know all the things that make me respect Arv. Like I feel yeah. like, uh, yeah. I don't you know, know the legend. Like the, I know all the legends. Yeah. I know, I know this guy's performance. I know, I know the fucking Tesla. I know the music file. Wow. I, know, I know all the, I know, I know, I know next gen. I know, I know everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a historian. You're a historian? <laughs> Dude's like five years old. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Have you heard of the legend, you know, of Arab? Of <laughs> Arab. <laughs> 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 You're really bad at saying names, huh? Yeah. Okay. What's the best advice you've ever gotten specifically about what figuring out what to work on? Don't take advice too seriously is the best advice. Mm. What's the worst advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> that's, that's hard. Uh, you know Kevlin, right? Kevlin? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know Kevlin. Yeah. We, me and him walked around like uh, tree hacks and like asked people like, hey, like who's the smartest person you know? And they would answer like really seriously. You could print it to be like an organizer. And like, who's the dumbest person you know? I feel like you just did that to me. You know, you're just like, you just hit me with the like, complete hit, reversal. Hit, hit me with that. <laughs> who's the dumbest person you know? Arb. Oh, <laughs> no, no, hit me with the other, the next one. Who's the smartest person you know? Arb. That, that is profound. Damn. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You can't even do math when driving a Tesla with his mind. <laughs> I, I'm a historian. What, what did I say? I know the lore. Yeah. <laughs> That's a while. He's going to take this personally. Is this going in? Uh, oh, man. We have Is to this put going that in? in. He, he, he did the math wrong. That's on him. Facts. All right. Last question. Okay, sent it. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm you too had, much of a fucking... Uh, I'll give you an easier question. Can, can you give us like three? I don't know. It's like, uh, I think I'm a big fan of Blade Runner, I'd say. Yeah, that's a good one. great choice. I think I'll give you my, some of my top. I think Blade, Blade Runner is great. Have you seen like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Yeah, that's another great choice. Also just fun, yeah. classic, you know, a bunch wow. of, okay. I mean, the only other one is like, there's a lot of the ones here, there's a lot of great ones. Um, Howl's Moving Castle is like an amazing movie. I haven't seen that one. Uh, okay. it's that's the I think that's the first time you Studio haven't seen Ghibli. a movie. Yeah. Um, okay. How, how have you not seen that? Well, I don't know. Uh, Doctor Strangelove. It's a good one. Yeah. Great one. Wow, yeah, yeah. You have um, good choices. People people should watch all the movies he's saying. Yes. Okay. Should. Real. Magic question. Mike access. <laughs> <laughs> also also great in its own way. That's not a suggestion, by the way. That's my friend's dumbass suggestion at the bottom that I removed. But okay, yeah. If you, if you want to believe my friend, go for it. Yeah. You said not take advice seriously, but now you're quoting. Do not take that seriously. <laughs> <laughs> don't take me seriously either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey. Hey man. All right. Oh, yeah, like, I don't take myself seriously. That's the point. Right? You're a serious person. I'm serious and very specific. Like, and like in most cases, I don't care. And I think that's the point, right? Like I'm serious yeah. about things I take seriously. And that's like some of my work. I think it's it's my the relationship with my friends. But like in general, like, I don't know, like, why are you being so serious? In all cases, just like, screw yeah. around and enjoy your life. And like the things that matter, that matter. Bro, like, my, dude, my dude. village in India takes you so seriously. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two on <laughs> said, <you>. okay. <laughs> Bro, it's not the village. It's just you. <laughs> It takes a village. You know? It takes a village. <laughs> it takes a village to raise Will's follow our kid. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Tend off on a real question. If you had to pick one of your projects that was your favorite, which one would it be? Um, I, I don't think it's fun. My first NDA, honestly, is like something I'm proud of. Like wow. I, I did something I thought was funny and I built something and I learned something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Do you just mess around for the memes and ended up at OpenAI? I built, a, I built a chess engine that like nobody cared about and it wasn't that good, but it was a super fun project. I learned so much with that. Um, I built this like newsletter service. Like for I, I did eight projects last summer. Um, not last summer. Yeah, last summer I decided like, I'm just going to do eight projects. Um, mm. Actually, yeah, summer before last, right? I was like, I have six, I had like six, you know, 16 weeks. I'm going to do eight projects. And I decided like, I'm just going to require myself to launch at the end of these two weeks. And like, 
one of them, I just built this like uh, newsletter service. Um, mm-hmm. The idea of being like, I have a bunch of friends that want to start newsletters, but like they don't want to do it. So like, could I like pay them to start it? So you're like, could I like, oh. start the newsletter for them and put money per month and they just have to claim it and write and that way like it just motivates That's people to get started. That's a bad idea. really good idea. I know, it was idea. cool. Nobody cared. <laughs> like Wait, I spent a bunch of money. that? Sure, I'll send you the code base. Yes. Um, I, I, he going, you're not going to do anything I'm do with it. that. I'm a, sure. The point is that scissors, I spent two weeks on this, right? Actually, probably three, four weeks on this. Honestly, it was like a hard project. I had to learn how like email works and yeah. all these other things work. Nobody cared, but it doesn't matter. I learned so much from that project, mm. you know? Like that's what was coolest about it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't know. Like oh. that's the project I'm that's proud of. That's a great of, idea. You know? Yeah. That was a good answer. Yeah. We could probably go for hours, but we should probably... Yeah. Probably cut it here. Think. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. If you want to share one link to people that have listened this far, what would you share? Ooh, I got uh, it. We'll, we'll put it. So myfirstnda.com. <laughs> I, I d- depew.design. That's my that's my website. Sweet. Look at my projects. Also, there's a talk. I'm, I'm gonna p- plug other content during plug your it, content. Plug it. There's a c- talk I did at Michigan for this club called V1. Shout out to May. Um, that I I really stand by. It goes through like my entire process for building and like I actually watch it again. I think it's like really good at like how to build and like what that means. And like, if you're getting started, like I actually think that like, I don't think it's that good of a video just to be clear, but I think a lot of people told me that's helpful. So like, maybe it is. So like, just go go check it out. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for watching, especially if you got this far, leave a like, comment, subscribe, (laughs) all the YouTube things. What's so funny, huh? (laughs) If you got made it this far, what do you mean? You made it this far. Otherwise I'm not thinking. Wait, you think you're not going to make it this far? I tell them to comment something below if they made it. Comment something below. Comment, comment, uh, uh, something dumb. Something. Oh no. Comment. No, everybody comment. Okay. We can do that. Look, uh, comment Arab. <laughs> comment Arab. All right. Or whatever he said. Okay, I'm done.